John 20, beginning with verse 8. They went in also, then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. <clears throat> they went again unto their own homes. I'm sure that we are weary of being confined to our own homes. But think about the ride the disciples had been on. And now back to their homes. Think about it. Many scholars estimate that Jesus' uh, public ministry was three and a half years. There's some argument here and there, but most scholars agree that it was three and a half years. However long it culminated in the fearful, violent taking of Jesus. They had traveled with Jesus. They had eaten with him. They had worshiped together. They had been burden bearers for each other. They were now at home after the awe and wonder of it all. And something was happening. And yet it began even before they went back home. It began at the empty tomb for John in John 20 and verse 8 where it says, Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher. And when he saw, he believed. Now John, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, doesn't call his own name there. He writes that other disciple. John felt, I'm sure, as we uh, should feel, I don't deserve to be named. It reminds me of the Apostle Paul when he's talking about, I knew a certain man who was caught up into the third heaven. That was Paul, but he wasn't naming himself. There's a, a humility that they wanted to express under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I don't deserve to be named. Also, John referred to himself as that disciple that Jesus loved. And some talk about how uh, close he was to Jesus, and absolutely, certainly that was true. He was one of the three that he would take with him on special occasions and ask them to pray. But this expression is not one of pride. And since he, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is writing it about himself, it's not a bragging of this disciple that Jesus loved. Again, it's an expression of humility. Jesus loved me. Jesus loved me. Even me. I can sense it. And he loves you. Uh, and because he loves you, he wants you to do what John did at the empty tomb. Again, at verse 8, where he says he went in uh, and came to the sepulcher. He saw and he believed. And then it says, for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. The scripture, John had certainly heard with his ears. Having spent all of that time with Jesus, having been a, a Jew and raised under the scripture, surely he had heard the scriptures. But to hear with your heart, to have it come to where it's a reality to you in your spirit is different than just hearing it. To seek with all your heart before God and then to, to know. As I've pointed out in prior devotions, God had brought Old Testament believers to that place of seeing beyond the letter, beyond the words, to the substance of the reality. Beyond the form, beyond all of the ritual of the Old Testament to see the truth about their coming, coming Messiah. By the reality of the risen Lord, the disciples were enabled to look beyond the letter of the Scriptures. Beyond all the literal events to the power of the truth that those events conveyed. They had walked with Jesus uh, they had heard with their ears. He even said it in Mark 8, 31, for example, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He had said it in their hearing. But the truth of that reality became real through the wonder of Holy Scripture. That's what John said. What, what they believed 
was because of the Scriptures. Seeing beyond the words of Holy Scripture to the Word, to God Himself, and the truth that it, those words conveyed. As I've pointed out in all the Old Testament ordinances, ceremonies, miracles, and historical events, there is a message the buried treasure of truth about God and His Holy Son. While these events had played out before their very eyes, they were seeing the Scriptures in formation. And yes, from the Scriptures they already had, the Old Testament inspired Scriptures, they were beginning to see for themselves the truth of all that Jesus was and the truth that all that Jesus taught. And we have Peter, while walking with Jesus, was convinced he was the Messiah. You remember in Matthew 16, 14, when Jesus said, Whom do men say that I am, that I the Son of Man am? Uh, he said, some, uh, they answered, Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say uh, Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. In other words, one of those prophets come back to witness of these things. And Jesus said, But whom say ye that I am? And as you know, most of you know, Peter answered without hesitation, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, Simon son of Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Petros. And Jesus used the masculine form of the word rock. And then he said, and upon this Petra, the feminine, feminine form of the word rock. And the reason I mention that is because it's not talking about Peter, it's talking about something else. And then he says, and I will build my church upon that rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He wasn't building the church on Peter. He, he's building the church on what happened in Peter's heart. That he knew who Jesus was. And Jesus said, that's not because men have revealed it unto you, not because of flesh and blood, but my Father which is in heaven. And that's what was happening with John as he viewed the empty tomb, recognized the fact of Scripture, of Holy Scripture. Look at Matthew 7. Or just listen to Matthew 7, beginning of verse 21. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Depart, sinners. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew. And the viruses threatened us, we could add. The winds blew and, the, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto a... Everyone that heareth these thing, sayings of mine and doeth them not uh, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. So he taught something he really knew was the truth. And it came from his heart. It wasn't just words on a page. Notice in verse 24, the word heareth. 
It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The word heareth means to listen in order to understand and to respond. It doesn't mean just listening so that the sound comes to our ears, but listening in order to understand and to carry out or to respond. In other words, to hear and believe and to recline upon, to trust. The Greek word uh, that's translated believe is to recline upon, to put your weight upon, to put your whole being upon and trust. The verb in the Greek is present tense. Building, listening, hearing upon the rock. Are you building your life on the rock? Not on Peter. Not on the form or the ritual. Not the historical events alone, but the truth taught by the Spirit. As John said, I looked at the empty tomb and the Scriptures came alive in my heart and I believed. Listen to something that A.W. Tozer wrote in a, in a book that I have. Under Form Without Worship is the title. And he said this, Men like ceremony without love or meaning, and God always insists on love and meaning regardless of ceremony. And men love form without worship, and God wants worship whether he has form or not. And the externalism lies in words and ceremonies and forms. Internalism lies in content, in love, in worship, in inward spiritual reality. Amen and amen to that. The form and ceremony of Easter is over. Now what? Jesus is risen. Now what? Are you building your life on the revelation of the risen Lord? Seek Him with all your heart. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the reality of Easter. Thank you for what, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is recorded about John's experience as he entered that empty tomb. And he said he believed. He believed the Scriptures and what they said what they conveyed and the truth that they produced in his heart finally in that moment. And Father, we pray that that reality of the risen Lord would be in our hearts and we would be listening, hearing, believing, trusting with all of our heart for it makes all the difference. And our lives will be built upon the rock. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.